of the scored Fort Francis goal at 217 in the first period. And the Armstrong Cooper goal was scored by Autumn Lindgren at the 657 mark. As Fort Francis, who made the five hour trip to the Twin Cities, is on the ice, as well as Armstrong Cooper, as we get ready for the third period. That's Milkaday for Armstrong Cooper. As the puck goes into the corner, picked up by Hannah Johnson. Johnson going around her own net. And racing for the puck is Kendra Calder. Kendra with one goal in the tournament. And the sister of leading scorer Jillian Calder was picked up an assist tonight, giving her 10 points on the tournament. Holton sending it along the boards for the wings. Wide to the right side of Launderville. And another wide right shot. Now it's Gartsky for Fort Francis. As the puck circles around the Fort Francis net. Going around the net. Here's an opportunity, they score! It looked like Jillian Calder. From the left slot. And it's 2-1 in favor of Fort Francis. At the 152 mark of the third period. We'll find out from Pete Wagner. If it's on Jillian Calder, it's her ninth goal of the tournament. Scoring for the Leafs, number 17, Jillian Calder. Scoring number 17, Kendra Calder. And number 8, Kelly Loveday. Turn the goal, 152. Kendra Calder and Kelly Loveday assisted on the goal, but Jillian Calder gets credited for the goal, her ninth goal of the tournament, and her 11th point of the weekend. The faceoff goes to Armstrong Cooper. It'll be offside with 12.07 to go in regulation time. Whether you're a fan of high school hockey, youth hockey, or figure skating, there's something for everyone on December 5th as Braemar Arena celebrates its 50th anniversary. Hi there's high school games, figure skating exhibition, as well as youth hockey games on all three of the ranks as well as the outdoor rink at Braemar. Come celebrate the 50th anniversary of Braemar Arena, Saturday, December 5th. Braemar Arena has been the long time home of the Edina Hornets. We've had great teams over the years under the leadership of Willard Eichelot. 
as well as state championships. Willard Eichel just released the book. Holton and Hannah Johnson. No icing on the point, picked up by Holton. Holton in the corner sends it over to Wilharm. Goes off of Sneed. Banked off the boards and it will be icing with 10.14 to go in regulation time. Once again, we'd like to welcome everybody in the Twin Cities as well as all over the great state of Minnesota, the United States, and around the world. It's great to have you with us for the 11th annual Cake Eater Classic. Well, Brent, I wonder who do we, who we have some tweets from, from all over the globe today. As Brett Johnson is running the camera between the Fort Francis and Armstrong Cooper benches. It looks like there will be a penalty for roughing at 5.06. It will be on the wings. It's on Fort Francis for roughing. So it will be a power play situation for Armstrong Cooper. As they look to even up the score and a deuce. Turcock with a roughing penalty at 5.06. As Snead will hold on with 9.28 to go in regulation time. 1.35 remaining in the Armstrong Cooper power play. Face off to the right of Snead. And we'll go to Armstrong Cooper. That's Holton with a shot and Snead with the save. Johnson. As the puck is cleared under the Armstrong Cooper zone, picked up by Grace Holton. Goes off of Johnson. Now the Leafs go on the attack. But it goes, they try to center it. Intercepted by Hannah Johnson. Now it's Holton. Holton getting quite a bit of ice time in this game. Goes along the left boards, goes into the center slot. Backs it off the boards. Play continues. Five seconds left in the power play. The penalty is over. Fort Francis is at full strength. It's very probable that later on, 
Armstrong Cooper will go to a sixth attacker and pull Kaylin Launderville. Now it's Kreisel for Armstrong Cooper. That's Holton in her own territory. There's a centering pass, Will Harm. The puck bounces off the boards. Sneed with a shot. And a save. Six and a half minutes in regulation. There's another shot, Sneed with a save. It will be icing with 5.56 to go in regulation time, a 2-1 lead for Fort Francis. The go-ahead goal scored by Jillian Calder. Minute 52 into the period as the faceoff is to the right of Ziggy Sneed. Goes to the wings. Wide to the right of Sneed. Play continues in the corner. There's Johnson. It's blocked. There's a race for the puck and it'll be won by Armstrong Cooper. It will also be icing with 4.59 remaining in regulation time. Reminder once again, not only can you watch today's games on edinaturning.com, but if you go to youtube.com and type into the search engine Cake Eater Classic, you'll find every championship game that has been webcast today. Even the next one that will be coming up between Edina Green and Wyzetta Blue for the 15 and under A championship. As the Cake Eater Classic wraps up, and they score! Armstrong Cooper evens the game on a right side goal with 4.47 to go. We will find out who got the tying goal for the Wings. Scoring for the Wings, number 10, Grace Holton. Holton gets the goal. Lindgren and Lesney get the assists as Grace Holton picks up her second goal of the tournament. Tying the game at two.
as the face off in the neutral zone goes to Armstrong Cooper. Launderville with the save with 4.03 remaining in regulation time. We hope you stick around for the awards ceremony where both teams will receive trophies. There will not be any medals distributed. I'm sure it's because of time. It's just trophies. That is Ott. Here's an opportunity for listening. There will also be a penalty for tripping at 11-17. It'll be a key power play coming up for Armstrong Cooper on a tripping call in Fort Francis. Turcotte is off for tripping at 11-17. A key power play for Armstrong Cooper, as well as a penalty killing opportunity for the Leafs. There's a save, rebound! Goes wide to the right of Sneed, of Skeed. 3.04 to go in regulation. 118 left in the Armstrong Cooper power play. As they clear the puck down the ice, it will be picked up by Holton. Holton with a tying goal for Armstrong Cooper. Trying to center it, but there are a couple of red jerseys in her way. Now it's Ott. Ott to listening. Goes off of ski. 30 seconds left in the wing power play. 2.10 remaining in regulation time. The puck is clear. Longerville goes out of the net to clear it away. And she gets back quickly. It would have been dangerous if the puck was headed for the net. And there's going to be a penalty coming up. A body check and call at 13.08. That will be on Wilharm. So after 10 seconds of four-on-four four play, Fort Francis will go on the power play. Fort Francis will call time. So will Les Khan. Pull Ziggy Skeen and go to a sixth attacker when the penalty runs out in 10 seconds. Or will they go five on four for the remainder of regulation time and hope to get the game winning goal? Or will Armstrong Cooper pull Wanderville? and go to a sixth attacker. It's been a pretty outstanding game for the 15 and under B championship of the 2015 Cake Eater Classic, where they served cake earlier in the arena lobby. Unfortunately, both the chocolate and the white frosting cakes have all been devoured. It was pretty good cake.
The face-off goes to Fort Francis. Now it's Milkaday for, there's a shot. Launderville holds on as Fort Francis is full strength. 142 left in regulation. Face off to the right of Launderville. Goes to the win. Fort Francis. There's a shot. They score. It looked like it was Jillian Calder who scored the power play goal. As Armstrong Cooper calls time. The goal coming at 13-22. Alex Garski got the goal. Jillian Calder and McKenna Watson pick up the assists. As Gartsky picks up her first goal of the tournament. And it could be a big one because it puts Fort Francis in the lead. Three to two on a power play goal. What a turn of events this game has become. Back and forth. Jillian Calder with her second assist of the game. Launderville steers it to the left side. 125 in regulation. Will Longerville be pulled for a sixth attacker? As play continues in her territory. We'll take a look to see if Longerville goes. But she stays in the net. One minute remaining in regulation time. Now it's Calder. As Launderville remains in goal, now she goes to the bench. A sixth attacker comes on for the wings. It goes wide to the right of Steed. 33 seconds in regulation. There's a shot down the ice. It'll be icing with 26.2 seconds remaining. And the Armstrong Cooper net is barren. Nobody is in the goal as the wings go to a sixth attacker. The face-off to the right of Ziggy Skeed. Second straight game that there's been a sixth attacker. Fifteen seconds go. Drives it down the ice and icing with 10.6 seconds remaining. Fort Francis up by a goal. As the puck goes down the ice, Icing once again, five and a half seconds remaining. They've been driving the puck toward the goal. But for the second time in a row, icing has been called. As Fort Francis makes the most of their five hour drive, to win the 15 and under B championship.
The Fort Francis Leafs are the 2015 Tank Eater Classic 15 and under B champions. In just a moment, we will have the award ceremony, followed by a recap of the 15 and under B championship game and a well-played game between the Fort Francis Leafs and the Armstrong Cooper Wings. Right now, we're going to go down to the ice, and here's Pete Wagoner. The Fort Francis Leafs, who got the game-winning goal with 1.38 remaining on the power play, pick up the 2015 Cake Eater Classic 15 and under B championship. Here's a recap of the championship game. Both teams scored a goal in the first period. Fort Francis' goal was scored by Callie Loveday with Jillian Calder assisting at 2.17. Four minutes and 40 seconds later, Armstrong Cooper even the score on a goal from Autumn Lindgren. Sidney Wilharm and Schmitty Seedy assisted at 6.57. Fort Francis took a 2-1 lead in the second period on a goal from Jillian Calder, her ninth of the tournament. Kendra Calder and Callie Loveday assisted at 1.52. Armstrong Cooper tied the game 